All right, so at this point, we're, we're finished talking about differentiability. Um, in, the, in the previous video, we, we introduced this Jacobian matrix, this matrix of partial derivatives. Um, that is going to make another appearance um, in the context that we're going to tackle now, which is the chain rule. But before we get there, we want to establish some of the basics. Okay. Um, so first of all, let me remind you how chain rule works in one variable, right? So here's your reminder. So if I give you two functions, f goes from r to r, g goes from R to R, um, differentiable and all of that, uh, you can get the composition. And, and here you can compose in either order, right? Um, we'll see that this isn't necessarily, well, sometimes it's the case. Uh, but we could compose. G compose with F, which also gives you a, a function from R to R. And chain rule says, The following. So the chain rule says that the, the derivative of G composed with F at some X. So, so basically what it says is that the derivative of a composition is the product of the derivatives. You just have to be sure to evaluate them at the right points, right? So G prime is evaluated at F of X and f prime is evaluated at x, right? Um, and, and what you want to think about here is that, you know, when you're, when you're doing this composition, it's going from r to r, right? And you're, you're, starting, you're starting with an x that lives in here, right? But then, you know, you're making this stop along the way over here at some other copy of r, and you get f of x living in here. And then, up here, you finally get g of, of f of x, right? That's how you form this composition, right? You go here, then there, then there. And, and so, when you're doing the derivative of g, right? Well, g is going from here to there, and we're starting at the point f of x. So g prime should be evaluated at f, right? f is going from here to there, right? And it starts at the point x, so f prime is evaluated at x. Um, so aside from accounting for the points where, where the function is, is starting, right, sort of the starting point for these functions, um, this is just the product of the derivatives. Um, so what, uh, what I want to eventually convince you of is that if we kind of generalize this, right, so, so that's, that's the, the one we're used to, right? So if we kind of want this to be more general, then what we do is we start with, an, say, an f going from, let's say, rm to rn, right? So now this is rm, down here is rn, right? So f takes us from there to there. Uh, g is going to take us from rn to rk, right? Well, then the, the composition goes from rm to to RK, right? Um, and, and so here, you can't, maybe you can go back, uh, you know, and then you get something from RK to RM, but you, you have to be a little bit more careful um, when you're trying to reverse things when you have more than one variable. Uh, the composition in the other order might make sense, uh, it might not. Um, but, so you have this sort of setup. Uh, so, what the, what the general chain rule is going to look like, if you use this sort of a capital D notation for this derivative, this Jacobian derivative that I mentioned in the previous video, um, chain rule ends up looking something like this. The derivative of G composed with F at a point A should look like, well, it's still going to be the product of the derivative. So it's going to be the derivative of G evaluated at F of A 
times the derivative of f evaluated at a, right? So aside from the fact that I'm using uh, this d instead of a prime, and, and you know, the, the dimensions of these spaces, this is, this is the exact same chain rule, right? Now, I have no, no justification for this, right? I haven't sort of said anything about why this should make sense. But what we'll do is we'll, we'll look at a couple of the special cases and we'll see that this pattern at least fits for some of the standard special cases that you're going to be working with on a daily basis. Um, notice though that this, uh, this product, right? What is this product in higher dimensions? Well, if you believe me that this derivative in general should be a matrix, right? So G, if we're going from, from here to here, this should be a a k by n matrix, uh, and f, if we're going from there to there, should be an n by m matrix. And remember that you can, you can multiply matrices as long as these inside numbers match, and they do, right? So this, this thing here, it really is, it's a matrix product. And so, for some of you, right, if, 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 if linear algebra is your thing, if you like working with matrices, you like working with vectors, um, if you want to think of the chain rule in this way and only in this way, be my guest, right? Think of every derivative as a, as a matrix. In a lot of cases, because we'll be dealing with real valued functions, um, that matrix is just a single row. It's not, you know, there's just one row in your matrix, but you can still think of it as a matrix, and you can still think of these things as matrix products, right? Um, and, and, and actually, maybe here's one other way to think about, you know, like, why do you have this rule for matrix multiplication that these things have to match, right? The n has to match the n. Well, if you think about trying to compose functions, right, the, the domain for the second function has to line up with the range for the first one, right? The, the outputs from f have to be eligible as inputs for g. Um, and, and so you kind of unpack this, or I mean, you can just think of this in terms of linear maps, but um, one way to think about this rule for, for a matrix product is you need that uh, in order to do function composition, right? So matrix multiplication is, is secretly function composition in the case where your functions are linear. Okay. Um, so let's look at a special case, right? So we're going to look at one sort of first special case. Um, and this is probably going to be the most common case that we deal with. Um, so this is going to be the case where uh, our first function, f, and actually I'm going to write f as, as r, is going to be a function from r to r. Well, okay, let's, let's say rn for now, um, but we'll do this, uh, when we actually write things out, we'll do this for n equals 2, right? Um, so we're looking at, you know, r of t is, you know, x1 of t down to xn of t. So the sort of vector valued functions that you consider in calc 3. Um, G, G is going to be a function going from Rn back to R, right? So, so, so G is going to be a function of, you know, say x1 up to xn, right? Um, and so if you compose these, uh, H, so H is going to be, oops, you know, G composed with F. Well, that's a function that begins and ends in R, right? So it looks like this. H of T is G of R of, of T. So it's G of X1 of T down to Xn of T, okay? So quick example. And then we'll, uh, we'll state what the chain rule looks like in this case. So let's say that R of t, let's take n equals 2, save myself some writing. Let's say R of t looks like maybe uh, 3t squared 
um, and um, 2t, something like that. And let's say that g of x, y is, oh, let's do x, y, e to the x. There we go. Okay. Um, so what do you get if you, if you were to compose these, right? So, so g of r of t, so this is going to be our h of t. So this is going to be what? It's going to be um, g of 3t squared, 2t. So it's going to be 3t squared times 2t times e to the 3t squared. So this is going to be 6t cubed e to the 3t squared. All right. Well, I know how to do h prime of t, right? This is, this is a standard calc 1 derivative. I just need product rule and chain rule. Um, h prime looks like 18t squared e to the 3t squared plus 6t cubed times e to the 3t squared. When I do the derivative of this, I've got to multiply by the exponent, right? Chain rule. Derivative there is 6t. Okay, so uh, why not? Let's simplify. 18t squared um, plus 36t to the 4 times e to the 3t squared, right? Okay, so you can do it that way. But the point is that you don't have to do it that way. You can also do chain rule. Um, so the way, the way that the chain rule looks in this case is it looks like this. Chain rule says that the derivative with respect to t of g of r of t looks like, so in the Leibniz notation, we could write it as, um, oops, um, dg dx dx dt plus dg dy dy dt. Okay? Few ways that you could unpack this, and by the way, thinking in terms of this matrix product, notice that this is this is what you get if you take um, dg dx dg dy as a row vector, and you multiply by x prime of t y prime of t as a column vector, right? Um, Remember that the rule for taking the derivative of, of this is you just take the derivative component-wise, right? So x1 prime, x2 prime, up to xn prime. And if I were writing this as a column, that's exactly what I would get. So this is r prime, right? So one, another, way, another way you could write this is you could also write this as the gradient of g dot product, think of that as a vector, dot product with r prime of t. Uh, that's another convenient way to write out this chain rule, okay? Um, and if this was three variables, well, then there would be a dg dz times dz dt and, and so on, right? Um, and so if you want to check, like, does this actually work? Does it give you the right answer? Um, well, let's see. Um, what should I get here? So dg dx is going to be, so if I do this, I should get, so dg dx, I get, um, I get a new product rule. So y e to the x plus xy e to the x. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the x derivative at xy. Um, dx dt, x prime. So x is 3t squared. So that derivative is 6t, okay? And dg dy 
is going to be just x e to the x. So there's the y derivative times y prime 2. Okay? Of course, you, you shouldn't leave it like this. Um, well, I guess you could, right? It's kind of awkward having these x's and y's and t's all mixed together. So one of the things you should probably remember is that, well, you're actually evaluating this at, you know, x equals uh, 3t squared and y is equal to 2t. And the same thing here, right? I guess there is no y in that one. And uh, if, you, if you plug all of those in, let's confirm and see what we get. What do we get? Um, we get, um, well, let's factor out the e to the x, um, which is, in fact, what? It's actually e to the 3t squared, like before. Um, here we get uh, 2t times 6t. 12t squared. Here I'm going to get um, 3t squared times 2t. So I'm up to 6t cubed times another 6, 36t cubed, 36t to the 4. 4. And here I just have 2 times x, so 2 times 3t squared, so um, 6t squared. Uh, and of course, if I combine 12t squared with 6t squared, I get 18t squared, which is what I had before. Um, so you can see that it checks out, at least in this example here, right? Um, now, we'll, uh, we'll encounter other cases in class. I'm just going to do the one case because this video is already way too long, but we'll look at some of the other videos later on in class. Um, some of the other cases are going to be the ones where, where this function here will depend on more than one variable. So you might have, let's say, a u and a v. Uh, the only thing that's going to really change in the, in the chain rule is that instead of a single uh, t derivative, you'd have a partial with respect to, let's say, u and a partial with respect to v, but it's going to follow the exact same pattern, right? Um, so most of the time, doing chain rules is a matter of, of, of getting used to these patterns. Just follow the patterns and, and you'll be okay. Uh, but you know, if you ever forget, I guess you could always try to fall back on this uh, on this matrix product definition. The only catch there is you also have to remember kind of you know wh what are the rows and the columns for your matrices. Um, so there's there's I guess I guess at some point you have to make sure that you know how to keep these things straight. There's probably not any way of getting around it. Um, but uh, we'd better stop here.